Is it a banner or a garland or do you call it bunting? Or is that just different words for the same thing? I'm just going to go with banner and I'm going to make one in this video. Shiburidu channel. My name is Irene and today I'm going to make a quilted banner. I'm going to use my new ABC foundation paper weaving pattern to make the letter Shiburidu and then I'm going to turn it into a banner. A super fun small project uh, which leaves you with a happy thing to put up in your house. You can either make it for a happy birthday, for a um, new baby that's born or uh, just put someone name, someone's name in the banner and uh, it will make a perfect little gift. First of all, I wanted to say thank you for all of you who already got the, the ABC pattern. Uh, thank you for all the lovely, lovely comments on it. Uh, it was a fun to make and I'm having so much fun making those letters so uh, I'm really pleased to see that you enjoy it as well. So what are we going to do today? I'm going to uh, trace the pattern on uh, tea bag paper, um, cut fabrics, uh, make the letters and then make a little template uh, to make one of the flags for the banner um, and turn those letters into uh, little flags to uh, put on a banner. And uh, you can find the details about this project and also a template to make your uh, little banner uh, on my blog, which I will put in the links in the comments below. To prepare everything for paper piecing, I print out my pattern. So I've printed all the letters and then I cut some pieces of tea bag paper and this is just cut roughly to size so that I can put it over my pattern and then I'll just trace it. After I've traced the pattern I will cut the uh, parts of my printed pattern in smaller pieces so I can use those pieces as templates for cutting my fabrics. So I use the pattern that I've printed two times. So now that I've got all the uh, template pieces, it's time to cut my fabric. And I'm going to use these two. Um, this is from the foundation fabric line by Sasa Frost Lane. And I'm going to use this gray as a background color and this for the sugar dew letters. Um, and I've separated my uh, paper piecing templates um, for uh, two colors that I'm going to use. So when I was cutting I already separated them in those two piles. So now that I can start cutting the fabrics I can first cut uh, all of one fabric and then all of the other and don't get mixed up that I used the wrong templates or the wrong fabrics. I always place my fabric when I'm using those templates I'm always placing my fabric with the right side down. So this is the right side that is going down and then I can just pick up a template place it with the number up on my fabric and then start cutting roughly around it and that's my first piece I was just laying them out like this so then I can assemble the pile uh, to go on my um, uh, pattern piece or my tea bag paper piece, I can assemble that later on. And cutting my fabric like this allows me to um, make good use of my fabric. So even though I'm cutting around the fabrics quite roughly, um, that makes sewing a lot easier. Um, I do use uh, my fabric quite efficiently because I um, kind of puzzle my pieces so that I use all of the fabric. There we go, all of the background pieces. And then this lovely pink fabric 
for the pieces for the letter. So then I'll just take my, um, my pattern and I'll start piling up the pieces. So one, two, three. And the final one. So now these are all fabrics that are in order. Uh, to sew on this uh, pattern piece so I'll just flip the pile around and so then I have my number one piece on top and I'll place it on my pattern and I'm just going to make piles like this of all the letters and once I get that ready um, I can start sewing I actually already started sewing on a quilting day with um, friends I had a few weeks ago and so this is the first letter that I made and I already made a few of them so I only have to do three letters today and then I can start on making the bunting. All remaining fabric pieces are cut and everything is nicely organized so I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and sew this all together and the technique that I'm using is foundation paper piecing and I made a video about that which I will link in uh, the screen somewhere it's a nice video where I show you exactly how this technique works so um, hop over to that video if you want to learn more about it and I'm just going to assemble these letters so we can start making the banner So now all the letters are assembled and pressed, I'm going to cut them to the final size. And then it's time to um, add some fabric around the letters to create the little bunting shape. So I'm squaring up all the letters and then when that is done I want to create a kind of bunching shape like this and then place the letters in there. So it's going to be, I think I'm going to go for this size. So then I need to know how much fabric I need to add to all the sides of course. I can see here that it's a little bit over half an inch. Well actually it's until here. Uh, so this is three quarters of an inch. And then of course I need to add half an inch seam allowance. So I need to have strips of one and a quarter inch. And those will go around the borders here. And then I'll add a wider strip over here and just cut out this little triangle at the end. But first I need to finish trimming off all the excess fabric of all the letters. I went ahead and cut some strips. Um, those are the 
thinner strips and one that is a little bit thicker for the part at the bottom. Um, yeah, so let's attach these to a pile of letters. All the letters are done, so they all have nice borders around the top and the sides and then a larger border uh, at the bottom. So that's my work for today. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to uh, cut out rectangles the same size as these little flags and then uh, make the little pointy bottom and um, assemble the flags. Good morning! It's a new day in the studio. And I went ahead and I've cut some uh, rectangles. So I've made the rectangles as big as the flags that I made yesterday. And I also cut a paper triangle. And this paper triangle, it's about 120 degrees. Um, you just need this corner and it doesn't matter how um, uh, big the triangle is. Uh, because how you're going to get the shape of the flag so what I decided on yesterday that I'm going to make this uh, pointy shape in the bottom um, so I made a triangle um, for the bottom and what you do then is that you can fold your flag like so and then mark the center uh, with your fingers so then you roughly have the center marking over here and then you can just place your triangle so that it matches over here and over here and that point matches in the middle and then you know exactly the shape that your flag is going to get not sure if that all made sense but i'm going to show you again while i'm sewing okay so what i was trying to say is that i have a pile of letters and you can make uh, the letters in the size that you like. I made them in a smaller size from the pattern, uh, but there's also a bigger size. And then you put borders around it to make the flag as big as you want to. And then you make a rectangle that is the same size as the flags. Um, next step is to get this template. This will be on my blog. And then fold this rectangle in half, so the backing rectangle. Just mark it a bit so you know where the center is. And what you do then is you place this point on the center line, and then this point matching over there, and that point matching over there. And then you need to mark this but oh wait should be on the wrong side of the fabric so over here you will place your template or you can make a template yourself I use the 120 degree angle and then just mark it There we go. So, and then when you place this on top of each other, you will line it up at the bottom. Um, when you sew this together, you will sew around the edge. So you sew over here with a quarter inch seam allowance until you reach, uh, reach the line. Then you go up over the line, down over the line, and then with a quarter inch seam allowance, you go up again. There we go, all sewn. So I've sewn around the edge and then up, down and up. And now uh, we get to trim off the uh, excess triangle because we need to turn this inside out. Mm. Just going to use a scissor for this. So I'm going to trim off triangle. And then you can also uh, go ahead and clip in 
up to your sewing line just to make turning it inside out a little bit easier and you can trim off the points over here okay so let's see if I can turn this inside out carefully use a, a pointy thing a pencil or I like to use the tip of my scissor but just be careful to press out those corners there we go Ta -da! and there is our little banner flag the first one so the top is still open um, but we're going to sew a binding along the top to connect all the flags together so this is what it looks like and uh, we can now go quilt this or sew around the edge to make it nice and flat or go crazy and uh, sew all over the, the flag just what you like um, I think I'm just going to give it a press and sew along the outside edges uh, and then I think this one is done and this is how it looks like when it's all nice flat uh, pressed and I've sewn along the outer edge so this is a perfect flat flag to uh, put on my banner this point could have been a little bit more crisp but this one already turned out really nice so time to make the others are finished and pressed and sewn around the outer edges and I'm going to use a pre-made binding um, to sew them all together and um, I always have a hard time working with this so I'm just going to uh, pin it to the flags first going to uh, center it and then um, pin the center flag in between and then just sew over it on the front so normal binding I would completely fold open and then sew to the front fold it over to the back and then sew it again but for these flags I'm just going to uh, sew it at once um, then I have only one stitching line uh, with the risk of it not being too precise at the back but that's okay because I guess I'm never going to see the back side of a flag so yeah, this is how it's going to uh, look. to uh, the binding so I'm going to uh, go and uh, 
top stitch this and then it's done. And this is how the back turned out. So the front looks quite nice and straight and then the back is a tiny bit wobbly but it's okay I think it's good enough for this one and only the first flag almost missed the binding over here but uh, it's good enough so on the front it looks really nice and there it is all done it was such a fun project to work on I wanted to say fun little project but um, the paper piecing letters do have quite a lot of detail um, because they have all those rounded edges um, so that paper piecing took quite a while to finish um, but all those little flags I think it's just a very very fun project to make for someone's birthday or to a uh, present for a little newborn I really like how this turned out I'm going to look for a nice place in my studio to put this up and again you can find the written instructions and the template um, on my blog the paper piecing pattern for the letters is in my webshop and um, yeah go check that out if you want to make a little banner for yourself I hope you like this video if so you can always give a thumbs up or subscribe to the Shuri Do channel if you never want to miss another video then you should also um, uh, put on the bell sign so then you get a notification when I posted a new video thank you so much for watching and following me in all my quilty adventures I'm always having the best time reading all your comments and uh, so if you have suggestions or questions just leave them down here in the comments and then I hope to see you again next week when I'm going to finish a um, work in progress. Bye bye!